Thank you. Um, so, yeah, tonight um, I want to tell you about what I think is the most exciting object that we have from the entire ancient world. And yet it's not a classical statue or vase or an Egyptian mummy or a beautiful piece of gold and jewellery. It's a collection of ancient battered bronze pieces called the Antikythera mechanism. So this is the, the largest piece. So the Antikythera mechanism is now held in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. Um, it was found on a shipwreck after 2,000 years under the sea, and it's the remains of a complex mathematical machine, um, and it completely mystified scholars when it was first discovered. Um, there's nothing else like this in the historical record. It's unique. Nothing, anything close to this sophistication occurs before it. Um, I wanted to finish just with this animation. So this was, this is showing us sort of the internal workings of the mechanism. And it was um, developed by an Italian astronomer called Mogi Vigentini. That's why it's got a lot of Italian subtitles on it. Um, um, and it's made according to um, a reconstruction of Michael Wright's. Um, I should just say that at the time, Wright thought that the box had a kind of stepped... Uh, shape, but actually now he and others agree it probably was more like a shoebox with inscriptions above and below the dials. Um, and I wanted to show it to you just to get across the, the breathtaking complexity of the wheel so that you can see all of it together and also because I think it's really beautiful. Um, and while that's going, I'll just say that, you know, so most of the big questions we have about the mechanism have now been answered. So there's still research going on. Researchers are still arguing about sort of smaller points to do with uh, the working. So the exact eclipse prediction scheme used, for example, or how was the varying motion of the sun modeled. But we have most of the big answers. Um, but there is one sort of more, pu one more puzzle about it that really... Um, intrigues me, and that is, which came first? Was it the, the mathematical theories of how the heavens work, or was it these practical models? Um, because it's always been assumed that the kind of the theories came first, and then the Greeks tried to work out how they could represent those in bronze using gear wheels, but it was suggested a few years ago that it might actually be the other way around, that in some cases at least, it was the machines that inspired the theories. So if you take the idea of epicycles, for example, um, you can imagine that maybe um, you know, a mechanic was in his workshop trying, with a, trying to use gear wheels, playing around with them, seeing if he could find a way to use them to model the back and forth motion of the planets in the sky. And he realised that he could do it by mounting little wheels on top of big ones. And then maybe that is what inspired the theory of epicycles. Um, and probably the two things, the, the theoretical ideas and the practical models, were kind of working together, sort of bouncing off each other over time. But I, I loved the idea that perhaps it was these kinds of devices that were helping to kind of inspire and drive those theories about how the universe works. And this isn't just about any sort of specific theory or mathematical model or particular celestial motion. Um, this is probably true in a much bigger sense as well, because the more we learn about the Antikythera mechanism, the more it seems like devices like this um, we're actually helping to sort of drive and inspire the overarching idea of the, the cosmos as a machine, you know, the universe as a physical mechanism that has an underlying order to it, that doesn't just work through the whim of the gods, um, but it's actually working according to rules, the rules that we can measure and understand and predict. And, and for me, that is why, I'm just going to... That is why this object is so exciting, because within these sort of ancient gear wheels, there is an idea that changed humanity, this metaphor of the universe as a machine, a metaphor that became an entire philosophy. You know, it, it ultimately, this is what triggered 
science um, and our modern world view. Um, so I'm just going to finish on a slide for more information if you're interested. Um, and thank you very much. <laughs>